So let's uh, now talk about the basic anatomy for understanding injection technique into the shoulder and especially regarding the uh, shoulder anatomy in glenohumeral injections uh, the um, injections in the um, AC joint, the porcel injections and uh, finally the uh, treatment, the sonoguided treatment of the calcific tendinitis in the shoulder. As we know, blind injections have a poor accuracy to just to achieve and to, to arrive the, the glenohumeral joint and the clearly advantages of the ultrasound guided injections are the mitigation of the radiation, the execution time, the cost effectiveness and also the convenience for the physician also for the patient. We have uh, several studies uh, that show us that the uh, blind injections uh, has um, accuracies about the 26% in the study of Sethi, 10% only in the study in, uh, of Jones, um, under uh, another study for Eustace, uh, just uh, uh, up to 42, while um, injections, uh, echo guided, uh, ultrasound guided, um, goes uh, in a study of Rotten uh, just uh, to 94 uh, success. Uh, and with a similar success uh, with an anterior or posterior approaches. Regarding the glenohumeral injections, uh, we know now that this, uh, the ultrasound is, is essential just to ensure a correct approach during injections and the treatment um, in uh, such injections is just uh, for adhesive capsulitis for degenerative joint diseases, uh, for aspiration of uh, effusion, and uh, just to exclude uh, septic or crystalline diseases in joint, and also uh, for some uh, articulate sided uh, rotator cuff diseases, and also for labral uh, pathology. Regarding injections in glenohumeral uh, joint we have two main approaches and, and, and techniques um, the anterior approaches or the posterior approaches if we look um, after anterior approaches the main the most uh, used is just the, the the approach through the rotator interval as we know, rotator interval just uh, between the anterior border of the supraspinatus and the uh, superior border of the subscapularis. And that, uh, this is our target. The main problem in such um, ultrasound guided approaches is that uh, we can uh, see uh, clearly the shoulder, the, the needle, because it's uh, almost perpendicular to the joint. The glenohumeral uh, approach through the rotator intervals we see here through this lightning uh, through the arthroscope we see that the joint is um, almost always in line with the AC joint uh, the references are one centimeter inferior and one centimeter lateral to the AC joint uh, with the shoulder in, in extension and, and with the with the needle uh, a little bit uh, oblique uh, 30 degrees uh, in a superior inferior direction we uh, achieve the, the the joint there is another way is a little bit um, distal to the interval this is just uh, through the superior part of the subscapularis we see uh, through this lightning the references here are one centimeter lateral uh, to the coracoid process and so about two centimeters to the AC joint if we go perpendicular in this way we will uh, see and we will uh, achieve the infiltration just in the articulation in the joint 
the shoulder position is the same and here we have not to make a little bit oblique the needle just uh, trying to maintain the needle so perpendicular as possible as we see it's the, as we can see it's not possible just to to see the the needle to control the needle with the ultrasound because of the perpendicularity from the needle to the joint the only way we can use the ultrasound in this uh, anterior approach is just yes, uh, for marking the real the position of the joint as we see here lateral to the coracoid process we see here the needle we, we, we put the needle between the, the skin and the transducer just to mark the, the position of the joint and second when we make our infiltration we go two three centimeters uh, perpendicular just in the deep in the depth of the joint and we could we can control from posterior how the joint is distant how the distension of the posterior joint space while we inject our medicament this is why uh, almost all anterior approaches are uh, with indirect techniques there are no way just to control uh, clearly the, the needle from anterior and this is why uh, most of the, uh, of the people who make posterior who make infiltration ultrasound guided uh, make it uh, with uh, posterior or through posterior approaches and uh, in this case the we have also two ways just to position the, the patient in a, in a prone uh, position with the arm hanging out of the table or uh, in the sitting position with the arm uh, just resting on the other uh, shoulder. The posterior approach in this uh, prone position that uh, we make uh, most the shoulder has to be a little bit adductor uh, and thus opening the glenohumeral joint space. We put the, uh, the transducer just um, inferior and parallel to the spine of the scapula and we uh, use normally a long needle, a 7 cm long needle so it suffice depending uh, on the size of the shoulder and also on the uh, depth of the glenohumeral joint space. The target here is just to control the posterior part of the scapula, the labrum. We will uh, pass through the infraspinatus and the deltoid and just our target is the, the virtual space between the glenoid labrum and the, the humeral head. As we see, we can uh, enter through a medial portal, also through a lateral portal, just uh, both targeting the, the, the space um, between the labrum and the humeral head, as we see here on, the, on this schema. Important also the the, the rotation of the arm. Uh, by inner rotation of the shoulder, the cartilage of the humeral head can be observed uh, moving against the, the glenohumeral uh, complex uh, and, and against the, the labrum. And uh, we see the whole cartilage in inner rotation, thus we have a more surface of the of the joint, uh, whether with external rotation we see the, the tendon of the spinatus, our uh, target is, uh, is not so, so big, but, uh, the, but it's clearly better because the, the pouch is, is clearly, the capsule is clearly relaxed in external rotation and uh, is, is tense in the uh, inner rotation. This is why we have to choose normally, we used to choose normally a middle position between inner rotation and external rotation. 
as we see here, when we rotate, the, the pouch is clearly not so big, while in external in internal rotation the cartilage emerge quite larger, quite larger. But the pouch is clearly distant in external rotation and is clearly tense in inner rotation. Here just to see while when we see the cartilage we are clearly over the joint space and under the tendon of the infraspinatus. The posterior medial approach is the most used because just the target uh, to get the target between the, the labrum and the humeral head we will go very perpendicular yes to the humeral head so we always can stick the cartilage as we said always when we see cartilage we are just inside the joint and through the capsule. As we see here in this atroscopic view, the pouch on the posterior part of the shoulder is, is, is big enough. We have to be so close as, so close as possible to the labrum, to the posterior labrum. A little bit more a little bit closer to the labrum. If we stick the labrum, it doesn't be a big problem because it makes a, a little hole with a needle, but it's not so dangerous as we see when we go very close to the to the labrum. We, we can't damage the, the the cartilage of the glenoid. Only is just to stick the labrum or to stick the humeral head and the cartilage. This is almost the only pitfall of this uh, of this uh, posterior medial posterior approach is just to stick the cartilage. It's not so important just to stick it in, uh, in the humeral head and uh, also to to trespass the, the labrum on the posterior part. Another uh, problem could be if we choose a needle that is not strong enough because uh, especially in inner rotation the, the capsule is uh, very tense, is very, very tense and it could happen that the, that the needle just glide over the capsule and over the head not going inside the joint. We can see when we inject, when we our, make our injection, first the distension of the joint, the, of the of the of the joint, uh, and then distending the the whole capsule, just superficial. First distension inside the joint, and second the distension in the in the capsule. Important just to control, especially when we make the, the infiltration in inner rotation, what happens that uh, the capsule is so tense over the cartilage that the needle doesn't go through the capsule and the injection is made just uh, in the interspinatus. We can see how the liquid is just going inside the infraspinatus not inside the joint. We see how oh, this is a very often mistake. In these cases we have to reposition the, the needle just going a little bit uh, closer to the labrum is just going inside the joint. It is really driving a little bit the needle and just pushing it a little bit uh, more oblique just inside. 
The lateral is the, also the same. The, the transducer, the, the lateral posterior approach is, is the same one. The transducer is, is also positioned uh, just underneath the spine of the scapula, about two centimeters lateral from the lateral border of the transducer, and going just inside the joint. The, the, the main problem is just that due to the co convexity of the humeral head, we uh, can very often glide over the head and not uh, reaching the, the joint. If this happens, it is important to retrieve a little bit the needle and just make more in an inner rotation and go very uh, oblique, just inside, over the cartilage just to feel the joint from the lateral part just going targeting the cartilage and not our pouch between the labrum and the head. Regarding the AC joint in cases of degenerative or traumatic arthropathy with a uh, normal 21 gauge and 4 centimeters needle. We mainly and mostly make the infiltration just um, in the out of plane way. We uh, put normally a needle between the transducer and uh, the skin just uh, to mark the middle, the, the, the middle position of the AC joint and then retrieving a, a little bit the needle and going through that point just perpendicular to the joint we will see our needle with the lightning with the reverberation artifact just inside the joint we can see here also the the needle inside the joint and then we make inside the joint our infiltration there's a second way I personally uh, make it uh, more often in this way. I, I, I put um, the transducer just uh, uh, perpendicular to the clavicle and then move lateral just uh, till I see the, the joint, this uh, hypoechoic space, and then perpendicular to the joint in controlling it in the in plane in the long axis just through this point putting the needle inside the joint the best is that we can control just not to trespass the, the whole joint and we are sure controlling the whole needle that we are inside the AC joint Bosal injections are also very easy and very often done. We have to target the virtual space between the bosal wall and the rotator cuff. This is this hyperechogenic space over the cuff and underneath the, the bosa. This is our target. And in this target, normally we, in the long axis, we put a needle just in this epicoic space. We feel a little bit and we, we are sure that we are inside the bosom. Then we feel our 7 10 centimeters with the uh, anesthetic and with uh, usually the answer alone inside the, the bosom. The long head of the biceps tendon can always also be infiltrated just uh, uh, inside the sheath or, or just to aspirate the fusion. The position is uh, uh, in the long uh, in the long uh, axis. The transducer is perpendicular to the arm, and uh, in an in-plane technique, just uh, we control. The needle just going over the biceps tendon or making our infiltration just uh, surrounding the tendon in.